How's it going, folks? I'm Des with Desfit. This is the new Speed Sensor 2 and Cadence Sensor 2 from Garmin. So, speed sensors can collect speed and distance for situations where you don't have GPS, like indoor cycling, but they also can be useful for situations where GPS coverage can get a little bit iffy. So, let's say for mountain biking in a heavily wooded area, or if you tend to go through a lot of tunnels. And then cadence sensors are going to be a little bit less exciting where they're going to tell you how fast your cranks or your legs are rotating, but that still can be very useful data. But there actually are a couple cool things about these new generation speed and cadence sensors. First of all, they add Bluetooth along with AMP Plus transmission protocol. So that's going to provide a lot more options in regards to what devices you can actually pair these to because some devices only pair to AMP Plus, some devices pair to both, and then some devices only pair to Bluetooth Smart. And although adding Bluetooth may not seem like that big a deal, it actually allows these sensors to be used with indoor cycling training platforms like Zwift using your Apple TV, iPad, or your iPhone. So adding Bluetooth updates the Garmin Speed and Cadence sensors to today's current standards, but there actually is one more neat little thing that the Speed Sensor 2 can do specifically. It can actually track your speed and distance without pairing it to anything, and that's whether you're outdoors or indoors. So it kind of just does this all quietly in the background, and then the next time it pairs to your phone, that's right, when it pairs to your phone, it'll actually upload that data. And we'll get into the details here in a second, but let's go ahead and get some of the basics out of the way. So this is the Speed Sensor 2 and Cadence Sensor 2 bundle, but you can buy them separately. But inside the box, you're going to have your standard instructions and safety information. And then you're going to have the three straps that are going to hold the Cadence Sensor onto your crank arm. And then in this little black plastic baggy thingy, you're going to have the Speed Sensor 2 as well as the Cadence Sensor 2. The Cadence Sensor is nice and flat, and then on the back is going to be the battery compartment. Actually, basically the entire thing is the battery compartment. And then you can remove the battery by just using your fingernail to rotate the cover. And then the Speed Sensor is just like the previous generation where it can be removed from the rubber holster. You'll need a coin or broad flathead screwdriver to remove this cover though, and the battery just kind of pops out of it. But both of these use the extremely common CR2032 batteries that are used in a lot of small devices, including chest heart rate monitors. Anyhow, let's place these back in the rubber holster and then go ahead and install these. So the speed sensor install, wrap it around your hub and hook it into place. That's it. But if you are using this on an indoor trainer, you're going to want to make sure to put it on your rear hub. If you're using it outdoors, you can place it on either your front hub or your rear hub. Now the cadence sensor, this one's much more involved. This may take upwards of 30 seconds. But basically, you just need to make sure it doesn't interfere with your chain stay. That's the only catch. It doesn't really matter where in the crank arm you're going to install it as long as it doesn't hit anything when it's rotating. You may have more space closer to the bottom bracket, but that's kind of totally up to you. Oh, and install it on your left-hand crank arm. With speed and cadence sensors, you're going to want to pair it with either your watch or your head unit, and these sensors are going to be no different. You'll rotate your wheel to wake up the speed sensor, and then it should appear when you go to add a new sensor on whatever device you want to use it with. And then rename it if your device allows you to, just so it's recognizable. From here, you could either have it try to automatically detect your wheel size, which I'll show you an example of how well that actually works here in just a second. But the best thing to do is just to enter your wheel size, which can be found on pretty much every tire out there. The cadence sensor is much simpler again, where just rotate your crank arm and then again, it should just appear when you go to add a cadence sensor. In regards to how the cadence sensor actually performed, you can see here that it was in line with two other test devices. And this little portion here at the beginning is in fact me abruptly stopping for a moment, but you can see that it tracked well, whether that was at a really slow or high cadence and even with the quick changes in tempo. So that's it for installing them and pairing them with a compatible device. But like I said, I was kind of curious about how well the automatic wheel size detection works. So what I did was I actually paired the speed sensor too with a Phoenix 5X and then I went for a bike ride, used GPS on some other devices just so I can get some reference data, but I used the indoor cycling profile on the 5X just so it couldn't use GPS at all. And at the end of the ride, it was one mile off for a 40 mile ride. That's not terrible by any means. And it was about two and a half percent off the actual distance. But like I said, that was just out of sheer curiosity. But the best thing to do will be to enter your wheel size manually just so you can get the most accurate data. But getting back to Bluetooth. So like I said, adding Bluetooth to both these sensors will allow you to use these sensors with online cycling platforms like Zwift using a iPad, Apple TV, or an iPhone but it's gonna be really darn simple, just like pairing them to your head unit, where in this example using Zwift, you'll log on to Zwift, then wake up your sensors, and then they should automatically appear in your available device list. Most of the time, if you pair the speed sensor, the cadence sensor should automatically pair as well. And then from there, you can get to training indoors. 
But finally, now onto that one neat trick with the speed sensor. So typically with speed sensors, you wouldn't necessarily actually pair it with your phone, but with the speed sensor 2, you're actually gonna want to pair it with Garmin Connect Mobile. First, go ahead and rotate your wheel a few times just to make sure the speed sensor is awake. Then go into Garmin Connect Mobile, then into devices, and then add a new device. If it doesn't automatically appear, just choose speed sensor 2 under all devices. And then there's gonna be a few other settings you can mess around with here, including your weight, and then you can also see the battery status as well as the little guide to the, all the blinky lights and such. All right, so here's how this works. So if you just go on a bike ride with the Speed Sensor 2 installed, of course, but you don't have it paired to a compatible device with GPS, it'll just quietly record your speed and distance data for that ride. Now, there's one little catch though, is that it actually won't upload that ride until the next time it wakes up and then pairs with Garmin Connect Mobile. So since the Speed Sensor 2 isn't an always on device, it needs to rotate to, for it to wake up again. So I suppose that makes sense and I hope I just made sense. On these examples here where I rode approximately one mile, we see that it overshoots just slightly. Nothing crazy by any means. And you can also see here that it does keep on recording for a little while longer than the other devices, which I manually stopped. But on this longer test, it's pretty darn close. So this is about a 22-ish mile example here, but you see that it does overshoot, but just barely, and it was extremely close to other test devices. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is that if you do take a break during a ride, you may end up with numerous saved ride segments. I'll get into how long it actually takes the speed sensor two to fall asleep and then save that segment of a ride. But I first wanna show you the accuracy in regards to the accumulated distance. So on this ride here, I stopped twice. The first time was about for 10 minutes or so, and then again for about five minutes here. So what happened is that I ended up with three different saved rides. But if we add all these distances together, you'll see that we are extremely close on the total distance, which was recorded on other devices using GPS, of course. Again, it overshot slightly, but from what I can tell, it may still try to record a little bit after you actually stop and then adds on just a little bit to each ride. And from my estimation, that turns out to be about a tenth to two tenths per ride, not necessarily per mile, but per ride. Now, in regards to when the Speed Sensor 2 will actually stop recording data, or I guess another way to put it would be when it actually falls asleep, I found this to be right around four minutes. So I don't think that you'll end up with numerous ride segments, like just say for stopping at stoplights, but maybe if you get stopped by a train. What would be cool is that if I could set a threshold for when the Speed Sensor 2 would fall asleep. So for instance, I'd wanna have it try to keep on recording for 10 minutes after I stop before saving a ride session. These are legitimate data files, by the way, without GPS, of course, that will get uploaded to Strava. And then Ray over at dcraymaker.com also did have another suggestion where if you could have a minimum distance threshold before it would sync to third-party services, that would be pretty darn cool. And both mine and his suggestions are things that could be theoretically added with a software update, so I hope Garmin takes these suggestions. So this neat little trick with the Speed Sensor 2 is something I think a lot of commuters would enjoy without having to stop and start a device all the time while still being able to collect all that distance so you can at least see that whether it's in Garmin Connect or Strava. Anyhow, if you have any questions about the Speed Sensor 2 or Cadence Sensor 2, make sure to leave those in the comments section down below. And on your way down there, <laughs> hit that like button if you don't mind and subscribe to the channel for plenty of fitness and sports technology reviews that are coming soon. And in the meantime, happy riding.